Can we give God a praise for our musicians today, for our singers, for the prayer, for the testimony and the scripture, for a beautiful welcome in the house. There's a song that says, The Spirit of the Lord is here. I feel it in the atmosphere. The Spirit of the Lord is here. I feel him in the atmosphere. The Spirit of the Lord is here. I feel him in the atmosphere. Say, the Spirit of the Lord is here. I feel him in the atmosphere. Say, the Spirit of the Lord is here. I feel them in the atmosphere. The Spirit of the Lord is here. I feel them in the atmosphere. Amen. Y'all feel the Spirit of the Lord here? Oh, can I preach it like I feel it today? Can I preach it like I feel it today? All right, let's jump into this. Let's jump into this. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Beginning at verse 16, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, Paul is writing to the church of Corinth. And here's what he says. He says, the moment that you turn to the Lord with a what? The moment you turn to the Lord with an open heart. Anybody got an open heart today? If you got a closed heart, it's okay. All you have to do is right now just open the door. At any moment, you have an opportunity, you have the choice, you have the command, you have the power, you can make the decision to right here, right now, open the door to your heart. The moment you turn to the Lord with an open heart, your veil will be lifted. Verse 17, the Lord is the, the Spirit. So not only did did people call Jesus Lord while he walked this earth? But Paul wants us to let us know that, hey, the spirit is also the Lord. And wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. I'm getting excited just from that verse right there. <laughs> wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. I'd like to spend a few moments in the sermon entitled, Set Me Free. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, Set Me Free. That was a week, Set Me Free. Turn to your other neighbor, the one that's maybe you like better, but say them, Set Me Free. Set Me Free. Let's pray. Spirit of the living God, set us free right now. Set us free from from our bondages, set us free from our addictions, set us free from our low self-esteem, set us free from our toxic relationships, set us free, God, from our unhealthy waves of spending and that's leaving us broke. God, set us free from our own selves. Set us free. Speak, for we're listening. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I was working with my brother-in-law this week, Ryan. Ryan, if you're listening, shout out to you, bro. And uh, I've been working with them because Ryan and Abby, they just had a baby, their first baby girl. And usually April works uh, with Ryan at the shop. And so I said, hey, I'll, I'll work for a couple of months to allow you to be home with the baby and I'll help Ryan. And so this week I was like, Ryan, there's this verse that's just speaking to me. He's like, what is it? Wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. Wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Wherever there, the spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. But as I was reflecting and thinking about this verse, I also stopped to look at my life, to navigate and begin to process and think about me. And then I asked the question, Josh, if there's freedom wherever the spirit of the Lord is, why don't you have freedom in this area of your life? What area in your life today are you not experiencing freedom and liberty and joy and liberation? Because I know there are certain areas in our lives where I do have freedom, but there are other areas in my life 
that maybe I don't have that same type of freedom. So question to you, church, what area in your life right now are you wanting to experience freedom? What area right now do you want to break free? What area do you want to be more than a conqueror through him who loved you and gave his life for you? What area of your life are you saying, I'm tired of walking in my prison. I'm tired of walking in my chains. I'm tired of walking through my addictions. I want to be free because wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there is. And, and so... Watch this, wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, the Spirit of God is everywhere all the time. The psalmist said, I cannot escape your presence. If I, if I make my bed in hell, you're there. If I go as far as to the east or to the west, you're there. If I go up, you're there. If I set sail and I, and I go anywhere I go, the Spirit of God is where? Everywhere. So if the Spirit of God is everywhere, there's only one place that the Spirit of God will not force himself in. And we just read it. The moment you turn to the Lord with a... Holy Spirit's not going to come in if you don't want him in. You hear me? If your door is closed, but the Spirit of God is knocking on your door, on the heart of your mind, and you don't let him in, and you and I don't make that conscious decision, then we won't experience the freedom and the liberty of God. Are you with me? What does that look like? You ever heard, felt something tugging inside of you? Saying, forgive them. Let go of that grudge. No, oh, I don't want to let go of the grudge. Then you won't have freedom. Because on the other side, of that grudge is your freedom if you open that door to forgiveness. You ever felt something just, just pull you? You can't explain it. You don't know why, but something just pulls you to, to do something. Vicky asked me often, what's it like? Like, what, do you, what is it like to hear from God? What does that mean? Like, I was like, well, I don't really hear his voice, but I hear him here. It's a silent voice, but it's something that pulls me. It's something that touches me. It's something that takes me beyond myself. And in that moment, I feel free. Free to be myself. Because when I'm in the Lord and the Lord is in me, I can, be, I can walk around. No shame. No guilt. Are you with me? When the Spirit of God is in me, I can, I'm going to get real, real with you right now. When the Spirit of God is with me, I can look at a woman and not lust after her. Amen. When the Spirit, why? Because I'm free from my lust. Are you with me? And that only happens when I open the door of my heart and I say yes to Jesus. When I say yes to Christ. But what happens every once in a while? That lust comes, that thought comes, that whatever comes, and I have a choice. Do I open the door or do I keep it shut? So question, do you want to be free today? Do you want to be free today? Do you want to be free in your marriage? To not always be fighting and bickering. You want to be free in your marriage to be able to look at your spouse and not notice all the bad things about them. All right? Like you get mad just the way he eats. I've been with them for 10 years, 20 years, and oh man, Jesus, I can't even stand the way he eats. Lord Jesus, free them from that spirit. Do you want to be free? Do you want to be free in your finances? Amen? See here, because here's what we do. I think we think that, that God is only interested in the spiritual stuff. And I've said it before, I'll say it again. God is not interested in your spiritual life. God is interested in your life. So God wants you to be free in your, in, in your finances. He wants you to be free in your relationships. He wants you to be free from yourself. Because he wants you to live to the ultimate version that he created you to be. The better you, the wiser you, the more loving you, the more powerful you, the creative you, the genius you, the you that you could just, I don't know, when you, when you say yes and you surrender to the spirit of God, I don't know about you, but I feel like I can walk on water. 
Are you with me? I feel like I have to walk on water. Because watch this, I have confidence not in myself, but I have confidence in the one that I put my trust in. I know how small I am. I know how messed up I am. I know how jacked up I am. I know how grumpy I can get. I know how I can hold grudges. I know that. But when I say yes to the spirit of God, I am the happiest I've ever been in my life. So why not say yes to God right now? Why not say yes to the Holy Spirit right now? Why not? What's stopping you? What's stopping you from saying yes, God? God doesn't want to control you. God doesn't want you to be some little puppet. God wants to empower you. God wants to have his spirit live in you. Why? So that you can, can walk in freedom and not be held by negative thinking, not be bound by our addictions, not be stuck with, do I have any people in the house who is my way or the highway mentality? You ever get stuck there before? There's a whole nother world outside of your way. And it's a beautiful one if you allow it. So let's be free, yeah? I want my freedom. I want my freedom. I want my freedom. But here's what I want us to think about. If you're taking notes, if you want to write it, take a screenshot. Freedom isn't the absence of discomfort, but we'll always have the comforter. Are you with me? I want to be free. Set me free. Paul says, wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. But freedom is not the absence of discomfort. You're going to go through really uncomfortable situations in life. Matter of fact, when Jesus was baptized and the spirit of God came upon him like a dove, it says that the spirit of God led him into the wilderness is not comfortable. That ain't going to a hotel and, and, and living a beautiful life. That, that's not a vacation. The wilderness is the place where you got nothing. The wilderness is the place where you feel like you're alone and nobody's out there. The wilderness is the place that it's a dry desert and your life sometimes feels like it's been dried up. There ain't nothing left there. Freedom isn't the absence of discomfort, but we'll always have the comforter. John chapter 14, beginning at 15. Jesus says this, loving me, he's talking to his disciples, loving me empowers you to obey what? Isn't it fun? Jesus, if you love me, your love for me will empower you to obey my commands. What are my commands? Love God, love people. You want to be free to love God and love people? Work on loving Jesus. Work on having an affection for Jesus. Focus on Jesus. Look to Jesus. Keep on keeping on. If you want to be free to love God and to love others, Jesus says, love me. Are you with me? But, but God, don't I got to do this? And don't I, Jesus, don't I got to do all this stuff? No, 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 no. Just love me. Start there. Start by loving me. Because I know a bunch of Christians who read the Bible doesn't mean that they love me. I know a bunch of Christians that go to church, it doesn't mean that they love me. I know a bunch of people who claim to be Christian, but it doesn't mean that they love me. Because they're more in love with their tradition, they're more in love with their religion, they're more in love with their rules and their regulations. Jesus says, I'm a person and I want a relationship with why oh you love me. And when you love me, I'll empower you to obey my commands and I will ask the Father. This is what Jesus says. I'll ask the Father, and he will give you someone just like me. Ooh. I'm going to give you someone just like me to do what? To comfort you. The comforter. It is the Holy Spirit who will be to you a friend just like me, and he will never leave you. I promise that I will never leave you helpless or abandon you as orphans. I will come back to soon. I will leave this world and they, the people, they'll see me no longer, but you will see me. What? The world's not going to see me, but what? who's, who's going to see me? You. 
You will see me because I will live again and you will come alive too. Now watch this. You'll see me because I live in you. Are you with me? I'm going to give you the comforter, the Holy Spirit. Jesus says, when I leave, I'm going to give you someone just as good as me. Matter of fact, better, because now the Holy Spirit can be with everybody all at once at the same time. How many people are on this world? Eight? Seven? Seven point five? Eight billion? Jesus says, I'm going to come alive in you. But it's up to you to say yes. It's up to us to open our heart and say yes to Jesus. To say yes to the spirit of God, to say yes to the spirit of love, to say yes to joy, to peace, to kindness, to say yes. She says, matter of fact, I know this might sound crazy, but it's to your benefit if I leave. She's, what are you talking about? That's crazy. It's to your benefit if I leave. Why? Because if I don't leave, I'm not going to send the comforter. But if I leave, I will send the comforter who is just like me. And the Holy Spirit will live inside of you. Whose phone is that? <laughs> it's all good. I'm not going to say whose it was. I'm like, are you with me? All right. Point number two. Ooh, I wish this one wasn't true. Ready? Wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Yeah. But freedom isn't the absence of a fight. Freedom is not the absence of a fight, but if God be for us, who can be against us? Can I just be real honest with you? You're going to have to fight. You're going to have to fight. And I'm not talking about physically fighting with your neighbor. I'm not talking about fighting with your, with your kids or your spouse. I'm talking about you're going to have to fight you. Because you are your biggest enemy. You're going to have to dig down deep. There are days, I've said it before, I've had to look at myself. I've had to tell myself, Josh, that's not you. You're not that person. You're not that character. You're not that addiction. You're not that low self-esteem. You're not what they said about you. You're not that. You are a child of God, and you're going to have to fight back the voices that keep on playing your head. People might have left you. People might have abandoned you. People might talk bad about you. But you're not what they say and you're not what happened to you. You are who's inside of you. And who's inside of you is the Spirit of God. And if you choose to say yes, if you choose to access that, if you choose to believe it, because I can't make any sense of it. I can't prove God's existence. I can't prove that the Spirit of God lives in me, but I'll tell you what, when I say yes to the Spirit of God, something happens to me. How do I know that God exists? Because something happens to me. I'm being transformed. I was at a Bible study last, this past week. Uh, heart, heart Rev Church. Heart Rev Church! And David was giving his testimony uh, David Villasenor, this dude, let me just say like this. I was listening to him, but I, was, but I was hearing the spirit of God in him. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? See, something happens when you and I recognize, when you and I say yes to the spirit. I'm listening. I'm looking physically at David, but I'm like, yo, Jesus is inside him right now. And I heard something, and in that moment, I just felt so touched, so moved, so proud. And I literally told him, I wrote him a bunch of stuff, but one of the things that I said was, you're transformed. Because that's what the Spirit of God does. God changes lives. God transforms lives. I used to be, fill in the blank, not no more. <laughs> I used to do this, fill in the blank, not no more. <laughs> I used to be this kind of way, but the Spirit of God lives in me, and I'm not that anymore because he who lives in me is greater than he who is in this world. And you and I have the opportunity. You and I have the chance. And the greatest fight that you're going to fight is you. Every day, you have to fight yourself. Will you say yes to love? Will you say yes to God? Will you say yes, Spirit of God, please? 
You have to dig down deep. Because every once in a while, actually not every once in a while, all the time, my goodness, Josh comes out. And Paul says this, getting to that level, I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. And when Christ lives in me, you will witness and experience the best version of Josh. I don't. You get an ugly Josh. But I thank God that there are people in my circle who love me unconditionally, that even when they see the ugly Josh, they're still there to love me and show me the love of God. Amen? All right. Last but not least, what time are we at? Somebody give me the time because we got to close this thing up. All right, we're going to close this up. Pablo, I like it. Can we give it up for Pablito? Pablo! By the way, y'all don't know this, but Pablo's from Spain. He's from Madrid. And uh, so that's, a, that's good for me because I like Real Madrid, their soccer team, and he likes them too. We're, we don't like Barcelona, Lionel Messi. Boo! <laughs> Anyways, okay, let me get back to the sermon. My goodness. All right, ready? Freedom isn't the absence of doubt. But Jesus said, if you have this, if you have faith the size of a, you can move mountains. Lord, set me free. Wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There's freedom. But freedom isn't the absence of doubt. It's not the absence of doubt. I mean, sometimes, even while you're, sometimes you're doubting, you're still walking, you're pressing through it. It is not the absence of doubt, but Jesus, if you had just had the faith, you know how small a mustard seed is? It's tiny. Have you ever felt like, I don't have enough faith? If I just believe more, if I just, if I just have more faith. Jesus says, let me, let me help you real quick. All you need is about this much. I'm going to step up. I'm going to do the rest. Freedom isn't the absence of doubt. But Jesus said, you have faith beside the mustard seed. I want to finish with this last scripture. And we're done. And we'll, we'll continue part two next week. Matthew chapter one, verse 18. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ took place. His mother Mary had promised Joseph to be his wife. But, somebody say but. Ugh, but. But while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. So Mary picked up the phone. They didn't have phones back then, but I'm just. Mary picked the phone and said, hey, Joseph. I gotta tell you something. Man, you ever had that call? <laughs> Girl called me. I gotta tell you something. We gotta talk. Are you sitting down? Why? What's up? Let me, yeah, let me talk to you. Uh, I'm pregnant. Ah, uh, that's cool. Uh, whose is it? Right? Whose is it? It ain't ours. It ain't mine. Whose is it? Her fiance Joseph was a righteous man, full of integrity. And he didn't want to disgrace her. But when he learned of her pregnancy, he secretly planned to break the engagement. It's a good man, right? Somebody's like, nah, he should have been with me anyways. <clears throat> While he was still debating, watch this. Here's the doubt. Here's where it creeps in. Freedom is not the absence of doubt. While he was still debating with himself about what to do, he fell asleep and he had a supernatural dream. An angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, Joseph, don't hesitate to take Mary into your home as your wife. Can you imagine you're engaged and if you live in a family like my family, there are a bunch of cheese mozos. <laughs> they like to talk. Okay, let me take that back. The Rios side, not the Perez, right? They're a bunch of talkers, right? Do you think that there's, you think Joseph, he's not feeling free at that moment. It's like, you gotta come to your family like, hey, hey fam, um, yeah, so uh, she's pregnant from somebody else, you know? And then can you imagine talking? Can you imagine going to the small town? Because they, they, they lived in small villages back in the day. Everybody would have been talking. 
So there's all these voices. And then the doubt starts to come up, right? And, and, and the brother, I imagine, he's debating with himself that he falls asleep. You ever been so just up here debating for so much? There's so much going on. You just tired yourself out and you just got to go, you got to go sleep. You've been so tired emotionally, mentally. You're just like, I'm, I haven't done anything physically today, <laughs> but I've been up here in my head. And I'm tired. So he falls asleep because he's doubting. How many of you men would believe that if your girl said, hey, I'm pregnant, right? He's doubting, he's struggling. And God is so good that God sends him an angel. And he says, hey, don't be afraid. Now in that moment, do you think Joseph had to practice a little bit of faith? Talk to me. Does it take faith to believe your honey boo boo who's pregnant, but you all haven't slept at all together? And she's like, I'm pregnant. Don't you think you have to step out in faith? Are you with me? But if you want your freedom on the other side of doubt, if you push through just enough, on the other side of your doubt is your freedom. And he was the greatest freedom that he would have received, that he would receive. Joseph said yes to the call. And the angel said, you're going to have a son and you will name him Jesus. You will be his earthly father. He had just a little bit of faith. He pushed through the doubt. He pushed, he pushed past the cheese muscles. Pushed past all of that. And he walked into his freedom because, watch this, his son would set him free. You will call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Joseph, you said yes to the call. You pushed past the doubt. And your son is the savior of the world. And you saying yes? is giving you access to that freedom. Are you with me? So how many want to be free? Let's pray. God, today, we want to be free. We want to be free from our, from our addictions, from the things that keep on trapping us and bringing us outside of our freedom. We all have an area in our life where we may not have freedom. We all have an area in our life where we keep running back to the thing that doesn't liberate us but only imprisons us. But wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. So God, today, I'm asking would you please help all of us right here, right now, to open our heart and say yes to the Spirit. Paul says that the moment you and I turn, turn to the Lord with an open heart, the veil will be lifted. We'll be liberated. Help us to choose you. Set us free. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, family, that does it. You are all dismissed. Please have a beautiful, beautiful rest of your Sabbath here. Uh, 12 o'clock is our next service if you want to stick around. Um, we'll see you next week. God bless you. Love you all. Adios.